previous lectures, we have seen that what are the requirement of running a cyclic accelerator. And the major requirement was to keep the synchronization. Now in this lecture, we will take a detailed look on the cyclotron. Consider that there is a magnetic field B here and magnetic field direction is out of the screen perpendicularly. Now consider a charged particle which is passing through this magnetic field. So this is the trajectory of the particle and at this point it enters into the magnetic field. Now as it enters into the magnetic field, magnetic field imparts a force given by Q V cross B. So Q V cross B means a force in the perpendicular direction to V as well as B. So this force on a positively charged particle will be in this direction and because of the perpendicular force this magnetic field will pants the trajectory of the particle. Now we are considering that in this region where the magnetic field is non-zero it has constant magnitude means the value of magnetic field doesn't change over the space and direction is also constant means everywhere the direction is out of the screen in the perpendicular direction. So in this magnetic field when particle passes through this magnetic field it feels a perpendicular force means a centripetal force and its trajectory becomes a circular trajectory and because we are considering constant magnetic field means this circular trajectory has the radius r constant everywhere means radius doesn't change as particle proceeds so it is a perfect circle made by the trajectory when we consider that this magnetic field is constant over the space it means we say this is a dipolar field so dipolar field means it is constant over the space. If we change the coordinates x, y, z in the magnetic field, the magnetic field doesn't change. This type of magnetic field can be generated by taking two poles, very long surfaces. Suppose this is a north pole and this is a south pole and this is very long broad surfaces. So in between there will be a uniform magnetic field that's why this is known as dipolar field because this has been, it can be generated using two poles now here because magnetic field imparts the centripetal force so centripetal force is equal to the magnetic force here magnetic force should be q v cross b however we are having that v perpendicular to B so V cross B will be just VB because sine 90 is 1 so this is written as QBB and we know that centripetal force is MV square by R however because we are considering energies which may be higher than the rest mass energy or may be comparable to the rest mass energy so this equation or formulation of the centripetal force must be corrected relativistically and that's why this gamma has been introduced here now remember here just multiplying mass with gamma doesn't produce correct result of this this is a special case when force is in perpendicular direction to the velocity means if acceleration is in perpendicular direction to the velocity then only this can be done. If velocity and accelerations are not perpendicular, then we have to obtain explicitly the expression of the force. You will see this kind of things when we will study the synchrotron radiation sources in detail. Now, this V here is cancelled by this V. So we have gamma mv by r is equal to q gamma mv is just the momentum p so this is gamma mv upon qb r will be and 
comma and we speak so radius of this circle this radius of this circle which is made by the trajectory of the charged particle is given by p by q means r is directly proportional to p momentum of the particle a higher momentum particle will have larger radius of curvature means it will make a larger circular path because it will bend less by the magnetic field because it is a higher energy so radius of curvature will be large and r is again inversely proportional to means if we increase the b the radius of curvature will decrease so a higher magnetic field will make a shorter circle for the given charge part and because r is directly proportional to p means magnetic field separate the trajectories according to the momentum of the particle that's why this kind of dipolar magnetic field is also known as momentum analyzer now we the very first thing for successful acceleration is to maintain the synchronization so we calculate what is the revolution time of this particle when it passes through the magnetic field so if um, there is a magnetic field and particle trajectory makes a complete circular path or complete circle and let the radius of this circle be r so length will be 2 pi r and now we have seen that in last slide that r can be calculated if we know the magnetic field and value of the charged particles charge and v so this value of r can be kept here from this value r is gamma mv by qb this gamma mv by qb so we just it will be 2 pi gamma mv upon qb so this will be the length of this orbit now we want to calculate the revolution time so this length will be divided by the v so this 2 pi gamma mv qb divided by this v so this will give you the revolution time now this v cancels out so 2 pi gamma m by q so revolution time you can see here depends on the rest mass of the particle which is a constant quantity q which is again a constant quantity b magnetic field which we are applying because we are applying a constant magnetic field so we can see that b is also constant for a given configuration and 2 pi is also constant only t revolution changes with gamma so at lower energy regime where gamma remains constant how gamma changes with beta we can plot here suppose on the axis we are plotting beta means how the speed is changing of the particle and here on the y axis we are plotting the gamma so uh, gamma minimum value of gamma is 1 so it goes like this so in the initial part gamma almost remains constant so when gamma remains constant t revolution doesn't change with energy it is a very beautiful result that as energy increases the length of the orbit increases and because the energy increases the speed also increases so increase in speed just compensates the increase in orbit length and that's why t remains constant and this is true only in the low energy regime where gamma remains constant when gamma changes this t revolution will increase with energy so for running a cyclotron if we want to maintain the synchronism with a constant frequency rf field this is valid only in the low region energy region so how the cyclotron looks like there are two big poles north and south this makes these pole moves make dipolar magnetic field perpendicular to 
this orange structure this orange structure is known as d inside this d there is vacuum and charged particle freely can move freely inside this d and when there is a gap between these two d there is the applied electric field so whenever particle crosses this field it gets energy from this electric field and due to this magnetic field which is constant over the d the particle makes a circular path so we can see here that particle starts its journey from this point so it gets some energy from the field and then because of the magnetic field it makes a circular path inside the d and again it crosses this uh, electric field then again it gets some energy from this electric field and it makes a larger circular path because of the increased energy magnetic field is constant so when energy increases the radius of curvature of the path will also increase so a larger circular path will be there in the next order after here again particle crosses this gap between the d and gets the energy from the electric field and it makes even a larger circular path in this fashion energy increases and the radius also increases and on the desired level of energy we can extract the particle from the cyclotron and this how b looks like from the side this is the side view so north pole and south pole and we have a constant magnetic field inside this area now here we have calculated that t revolution is basically 2 pi gamma m upon kb and omega revolution will be just 2 pi upon t revolution so omega revolution will be qb by gamma so this revolution frequency is known as cyclotron frequency if gamma is not changing much we can say that omega revolution is almost constant because we have applied a constant magnetic field q is constant and for a given charge particle now how cyclotron works we will see it in this plot you can consider that this is a d means whenever particle will cross this line its energy will increase in this plot we will plot the radius of curvature for each orbit and in this plot we will plot the energy so whenever the particle will cross this line its energy will be stepped up and in this plot we will show the revolution frequency of that particle so now we will see this in more so these are the orbit on each crossing radius has been increased and energy is also stepping up and here radius of curvature is also becoming larger and larger while here you can see that revolution frequency is almost constant and because of this constant revolution frequency synchronism can be maintained by a constant frequency rf field however when gamma will change much here you can see that gamma changes a very little bit if gamma changes with a large value this synchronism will be broken and acceleration will not take place so what is the highest energy possible in a cyclotron if we make the cyclotron magnet with a radius r means up to the r r is the largest radius the particle can go up to that orbit which is having the radius of particular as r so t is equal to half mv square we are using non relativistic formulation here because we are considering that we are working in that region where the gamma remains constant so naturally we are working in the non relativistic region that's why kinetic energy can be written down as half mv square because v is equal to omega r omega is the revolution frequency so v can be written down as omega r so it will be half m omega square r square now at the place of omega we can put qb by m keeping the gamma as one because we are considering that gamma is constant so this half mv square means omega is equal to qb upon gamma m 
and we are considering that gamma is approximately 1, no change in gamma, then omega will be approximately equal to QB upon M and this value has been written down. So kinetic energy will be half M Q square B square R square by M square. This M will be cancelled out by M. So we have half Q square B square R square by 2 M. Now at the place of Q, we can write down Q as Z means if we are accelerating some ion so charge on the ion will be z into electronic charge and mass of the ion will be a into mass of the ion. so a is the mass number and z shows the charge state of that so at the place of q we keep z square e square in the place of m we keep a m so here e is the charge on the electron and here m is the mass on the proton so these quantities are constant and for a given configuration of cyclotron b is also constant and r we have taken the largest possible radius in that cyclotron so r is also constant for a given cyclotron so these quantities are constant and z and a depends what ion we have selected and what is the charge state of that ion. So kinetic energy can be written down as K into Z square by A. So this K is known as K value of the cyclotron. If we are accelerating the proton then Z becomes 1 and A also becomes 1. In that case T is equal to K means K shows you what is the maximum possible value of a proton in a given cyclotron if gamma remains unchanged. So this is the maximum possible value. So we say that K130 cyclotron in the variable energy cyclotron center at Kolkata means proton can be accelerated theoretically maximum up to 130 mV. However, we have seen that gamma changes a little bit. So if we consider that little bit change so phase of RF where the particle arrives after one turn will change slight. So when this change accumulates over the turn by turn and when it change in phase becomes sufficient, particle cannot accelerate beyond that limit. So in practically the value of proton or energy which we can achieve using a cyclotron for the proton will also be lesser than this K. K is also known as bending power of the cyclotron. Now we have considered that a particle is entering into the magnetic field where the V is in perpendicular direction to the magnetic field B. Means particle's velocity vector is making 90 degree angle with respect to magnetic field B. Means it is nicely following a trajectory which we wish. This kind of particle is known as synchronous particle because this is an ideal particle which shows what should be the ideal trajectory or design trajectory in the accelerator. However, in beam there is a large number of particles and all these particles may not follow exactly the design trajectory. There may be deviation in the velocity vector, there may be deviation in the, from the design trajectory itself. So consider that a deviated particle in velocity means a particle is not having only perpendicular component of the velocity also it has some parallel component of the velocity than the field. This is the component B perpendicular and this component decides what should be the radius of curvature of the orbit which it will follow under the given magnetic field B. While this V parallel, there will be no force because V and B for this component is in same direction. So in this direction, particle will advances with this V component velocity. So particle will make a helical path, means particle will go 
in vertical direction continuously while making circular path. So this circular path is decided by this V perpendicular and advances in the vertical direction is decided by this V parameter. Now if it will be the case after few turns particle will hit the surface of the T's because there are D inside which particle follows circular trajectory. So after a certain time it will hit either the above surface or the below surface depending with what is the direction of this V perpendicular, a V parallel. So in that case we have to have some mechanism to keep these particles confined in the vertical plane also. How we can do that? We have considered that we have a nice dipole magnet means pole faces are parallel to each other. This is the pole face of the north pole and this is the pole face of the south pole. Both are exactly parallel to each other and we have nicely constant magnetic field in this space. Now suppose a particle is deviated in vertical direction from the central axis. This dotted line shows the central axis. So a particle which is deviated from the central uh, above or below from the central axis is still the force is exactly parallel to x axis or parallel to this central axis. Suppose particle is going inside the screen in the perpendicular direction, B is in this direction, so force will be in this direction for a positively charged particle. Now we want to bring some vertical force which will keep the particle confined in case if particle has certain velocity component in the perpendicular direction. So instead of making pole face perfect parallel, make some curve in the pole faces. So gap between the pole increases as we go away from the center. So here the gap is high here gap is low. Because here gap is low means magnetic field is stronger here and magnetic field is weaker here. So as we go outside from the center magnetic field becomes weaker and weaker. Means we are introducing a gradient in the magnetic field. What will happen now for a particle which is deviated in the vertical direction from the central axis in this configuration of the magnetic field. We see it. Now suppose a particle is again deviated here. Now here because the magnetic field line has a curvature, so magnetic field direction will be decided by the tangent at this point. So at this point magnetic field is in this direction. So this is marked here, this is the magnetic field direction. Still we are considering that particle is going in the screen in the perpendicular direction. So force will also be perpendicular to V as well as perpendicular to V. This is a 90 degree. So force now has vertical component also because force will be in this direction. So this will be the horizontal component of the force. This will be the vertical component of the force. So now we have vertical component of the force. Now here you can see that when the particle is below the axis, the magnetic field line will look like this and force will be in this direction. So horizontal direction of the force is still in the same direction while the direction of the vertical component of force has been reversed. So if particle is going above or below, it feels a force towards the central axis. Means a confinement is possible for the particles in case of vertical displacement or vertical velocity if we introduce some gradient in the dipolar magnetic. So if we introduce gradient in the dipolar magnetic field of a cyclotron, then vertical focusing is also possible. This kind of focusing which is obtained using the gradient in the dipole magnet is known as weak focusing. In later chapters, we will see what is the strong focusing when we will consider the quadrupole magnets.